Hello, my name is Lisa Schultz and this whiteboard seminar will be about social ecological inventories. And my starting point is this beautiful landscape, a lake with a fish, a meadow with a cow eating grass, mountain with a forest, and some birds. Now let's pretend that we are a conservation planner who wants to um, sustain the values of this area. Or we are a scientist, we are scientists who want to understand how the ecosystem, this landscape works. Then a common way of going about starting uh, understanding this is to make ecological inventories. And uh, then as a conservation planner, you make a plan out of that, a management plan, which you present to stakeholders in the area. Uh, or as a scientist, you write up a report about how this works and you might present it as well to the stakeholders in this area. What you miss if you take that approach is that in landscapes where people live, uh, there is already activities going on and knowledge existing about this landscape. And what the social ecological inventory does is to map uh, this, these activities uh, and the knowledge that already exists. So for example, we have a very tall fisherman there. We have a farmer. We have a bird watcher with a binocular. And a social ecological inventory then is a systematic way of mapping uh, actors in the region, their knowledge, their motives and interests, and their networks, their collaborations, interactions with each other with regards to a particular issue. So a social ecological uh, inventory is framed uh, by the investigator uh, and in this case we're concerned with ecosystem management so we're interested in all the actors that either manage or monitor uh, this landscape in one way or another. And the way you do this is that you begin with a scanning. You can use Google search or municipality archives of, of associations or uh, newspapers or depending on uh, your pre-understanding of this area to find all the organizations and groups of actors that you think uh, contribute to ecosystem management in one way or another. And then you start calling around to all these groups and associations and trying to find out who would be a good person to talk to. And when you start doing that, you need to have a clear understanding of, of what your focus of this social ecological inventory is, of course. Um, and then uh, when you find these, these people, uh, that uh, you can interview, you start interviewing them uh, and you go, actually go to them and interact with them and listen to them uh, and uh, to understand what they're doing and what they want and what they know. And then uh, you will also get lots of documents from them about uh, like annual reports and things and you will read through those as well and analyze them and then in the end you will have a pretty good understanding of what's going on and uh, who would be interested in participating in, for example, a resilience assessment. And then that's the last stage of a uh, social ecological inventory, some kind of engagement. And that can take forms of either presenting the total analysis to the people in the, that you have uh, worked with, or uh, uh, taking off doing a resilience assessment together, or a climate change adaptation project, depending on on why you did the SEI from the start. Uh, social ecological inventories uh, give you a, uh, a good understanding um, as a facilitator of such an event of uh, the people that come to the table. It also gives them a good understanding of, of what's going to happen and if they want to participate or not. So it's a trust building exercise before you bring everyone to the table. Uh, 
It's local, of course, and it's uh, focused mainly on the positive contributions. Um, so it's a complement to other approaches such as ecological inventories and stakeholder analysis. So social ec ecological inventories uh, are ways of systematically mapping actors, their knowledge, what they're doing, their motives, and how they collaborate. And it involves both a desk analysis and interviewing. Thank you. <laughs>